Yeah. How are you guys doing? I'm, I'm really blessed to be up here, seriously. Um, I'm a sophomore from Greensboro, like you said. And um, I bet you guys are wondering what this is and why I'm not that tall for a 16-year-old and why this arm's short in this one. I was born with a disease called Ollier's disease. It's a disease where your bones grow differently at your growth plate. So I've had to have many surgeries to correct, like, I think it was like 19 surgeries total, I think. And then once things started gotten going, I started getting used to everything. When I was about six or seven, I was diagnosed with leukemia. It's a cancer that kills many people every year. And then, so I've had to go through many hardships. And then two years ago, I was diagnosed with um, thyroid cancer. So it's another obstacle that I have to face. But even though I have all these things, I wake up every morning and I'm like, well, it's a new day. I'm just like everyone else. I have the same opportunities that everyone else does. If I had one word to describe myself, it'd be competitive. If you ask anyone I know, I'm seriously, I compete with anything. If you'd say at the time, I'll be like, nope, that's wrong. <laughs> no joke. But um, here's a story. Back in the day, or I played basketball, I used to, until people started getting too tall. But um, back at Upward, I don't know if you guys know Upward League, but it's a church league where you play basketball. And so I was starting this game, and it's four guys. And then you line up against the other team, the five team five players on the team, and you put a color on your shoulder. And you got to guard the same color that the other guy has. So I usually line up with the shortest kid, and the guy on the other side, he was like, man, this kid's not too tall. He's a big shoe. Should I just go easy on him? He said that to his friend. I think he's trying to whisper. He's really bad at whispering. But um, so I was like, what? This guy doesn't see me ball. Cause I, I got a pretty good jumper, I'm telling you. So I go over to my mom. I'm like, mom, these guys don't think I can, I can ball. So I go back over there, and the first two minutes of the game, I'm playing it off. I'm, like, limping down the court. I'm serious. I'm so serious. So I, I'm getting in his head. I'm, he seriously thinks that I cannot play basketball. So about two minutes in, I'm like, all right, I'm going to kick this in. And I take the ball in. I'm, you know, limping up the court. I don't really limp. but um, And then all of a sudden, I'm like, all right, I'm going to give him in and out, step back. So I get, go under the legs, step back. And I jay it. I drain it. I'm like trotting down the court. I'm smiling, looking at the guy. The crowd's going crazy. And the guy comes up to me. He's like, nice shot, man. And that really, I remember that moment because I can prove people wrong that physical abilities doesn't really affect who you are. I used to do that in baseball too. During warm-up pitches, I was a pitcher. Or I closed. I was like, I came in like last inning. But I'd, I'd give like little lobs and warm-ups, you know, throw the other team off. And then as soon as the batter came up, Throw heat, and he'd be like, "Straight." I'm like, "I can, I can throw." <laughs> but I think all that my competitiveness came from when I had leukemia. I was in the hospital. I had nothing better to do, but to literally watch ESPN or play NBA 2K on my, on my Xbox that I had. Literally, we put a Nerf basketball hoop at the end of my bed, put a trash can under it, and every time I blew my nose or had a little like spitball, I put it in a tissue and I'd shoot it to gain strength because leukemia takes all your strength out and another thing that I remember that we did every time I went to the bathroom to poop everyone poops okay but <laughs> so, I'd, so I'd sit on the toilet and my dad would sit over here on the tub and he'd have a little nerf ball and he'd he'd toss me the nerf ball and I had this miniature bat like a little tiny like plastic bat and I'd try to swing and hit the ball but I was really weak so I kind of just flail my arm but I remember one time we, we used to, like, do situations, like, say the bases are loaded, you know, the wall is first base. I didn't actually run, cause, yeah, that'd be weird. But I'd have the bat, and he pitched, I hit as hard as I could. The ball flew, hit the back of the bathtub, flew off, and hit me straight in the face. Me and my dad were dying laughing. But the reason why I have a positive attitude at all times is... I remember one time I was laying in the hospital bed, and it was snowing, and it was beautiful outside, and I was just wondering to myself, why do I have to be in this bed? Why, why can't I be out there playing in the snow, making s snowmen, and throwing snowballs at people? And I thought to myself, it doesn't make me feel any better to feel sorry for myself. I should just be happy. I have great doctors, a 
awesome family to be with me for all this time and great friends to visit me. So that's why I'm always positive. And everyone in this room has a choice. Everyone has the same choice. You have the same thing as you. You have a choice. You have a choice to be positive or negative about life. You can seriously wake up every morning. Everyone, all teenagers have this problem. You wake up every morning off of your perfectly awesome bed, perfect pillow, comfortable bed, with breakfast in the kitchen waiting for you, with your parent to send you off to school where you get a proper education, you laugh with your friends at school, you get to go home, clothes on your back, but you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see. Why is that? Because we all put each other down. I don't. It doesn't make sense to me, but it's just what happens. But we got to really, as teenagers, we got to push the haters aside and really realize that we all are beautiful in our own ways. And that's the other choice that we have. We can be positive. We can even be positive about negative things, like the story I have here for. This is... um. Before I had leukemia, it was a nice summer summer afternoon. It was a perfect day. I was on my lake house in Virginia, and we were out intertubing on our boat. My dad was whipping us side to side. We were doing circles and everything. It was crazy. But we do this every year, all the time. But there's no different day. But when I was out there, it was getting late, so it was like one of our last runs. So... My dad flips me off the tube. Nothing really hurt. I just got back on the boat, and it was a short run. So I was like, Dad, can I go again? He says, no, son. You know the, you know the rules. Once you fall off, you got to get back on the boat. So I got back on the boat. I went to the front of the boat and put my head down on the railing. There's a railing, and I put my head down because I was upset. And I closed my eyes, and just for a couple seconds later, I felt an ominous br- bl- breeze come in, and it felt really weird. And so I open my eyes and I look up. The sky is completely black. The wind started kicking up. The waves started getting real crazy. So we start heading back. And all of a sudden, the boat takes a huge jump and falls. And my head nails the railing. So I have this huge bruise right here. It's about the size of a baseball on the side of my cheek. And we, my parents are like, oh, whatever. Ibuprofen will t- take care of it for now. So... A couple of weeks later, though, we noticed something. It was still there. Nothing's changed. So we had to go see a doctor or two. And they said, well, your son has leukemia, and that, that really hit us hard. I remember my mom was crying for days, and I didn't really understand what leukemia was at the time. I just thought, you know, I knew that I would be sick, but I didn't think it would take that long or what chemo was and all that complications. But after that, I realized that I can't be negative on what I have because it's all I got. And I'll leave you guys with one more thing. I challenge all of you to look in the mirror. Next time you go into your room, look into the mirror and don't be sorry for what you have. Don't think of all your flaws, all the things that people say about you. Push it aside. And I want you to put a smile on your face because God makes every single one of you beautiful and unique in your own ways. Thank you.